So as Bree said, my name is Andrew Turner, and I've been on the committee, I think, four years now. But it's been amazing each year, and it's amazing to see everyone's uh, great submissions and, and what people are thinking of and, and uh, what's kind of coming up and, and where. Um, and also take this opportunity while my slides are coming up, hopefully this isn't counting against me, to mention Wear Camp this weekend, wearcamp.org. Everyone should check it out. So what I want to talk about is, is looking, as Brady mentioned, I moved to D.C., is, is looking at all this tech, great technology we're building and using and how people are using it and, and looking at where we can actually use where it matters. Um, how can we actually make an, a positive impact on both our communities and the world with this? So we look at this great amount of technology that's been made available. I mean, look, look at satellites and, and the amount of raw engineering power that makes these things, uh, the energy to get these things launched up and to be able to observe the, the Earth and, and planets and space and our environment and people and down to very micro levels. And so what are we doing with it? We're finding out where cool coffee shops are, where our friends are. And these are all very, very fun things. I can go and find out where I took my photographs and, and how to get to the nearest metro station, um, which, which are all kind of very fun, compelling things we're all working on. But we're going to think, what is our legacy we want to leave behind here? You know, what in the end will people remember us for? You know, what will we have done? What, what will I have been mayor of in the future? And, and, and thinking like, hmm, this is, this is really cool stuff, but how can I actually make potentially a bigger difference um, with all this great stuff and, and this huge community I have around me? As Brady mentioned, I moved to D.C. about a year and a half ago, August of uh, 2008, I guess, um, and, and t nestled in there between the crux of the Potomac River is, you know, the, the national, U.S. national government and multinational NGOs and a huge amount of people doing really meaningful things. Um, and now we have this ability to take social media and smartphones and devices and networks and start bringing a transparency to our democracy and our, pro and our process in the U.S. So looking at things like, do I have voting ballots and how long was my wait? But looking beyond just the U.S. is also looking internationally. So Patrick will talk later about Ushihidi and, and the ability to apply these open source platforms to doing democracy and transparency and access across the world to India, to Iran, to, to Kenya, to numerous other countries and start seeing and applying this technology to really, really, really meaningful things. And so now in the U.S. we have this new administration that's really kind of pushing this idea of change and transparency, participation, and collaboration. You see here a nice little open street map even on the Change White House website. So it's really starting to push this and there's actually becoming... Um, federal mandates on, on, on pushing out this technology and really engaging with developers with um, the government. So, so much that they actually even publish reports, there's always 80% of, of uh, data uh, is location-based. The government actually publishes 74% of the citizen, uh, services for citizens is geospatial in nature. So the government recognizes a huge amount of what they're doing is geospatial, and it's not just about the U.S., it's about the globe. So Mikkel will talk later this week about, about the great work in, in uh, Nairobi in um, Kibera, but all across the world now engaging citizens to actually harness their own data and, and be active participants in what they're doing and how they're engaging with the government. And thinking at, at various other um, cruxes of what we're dealing with, so global environmental change, food security, um, crisis response, development aid. So all these really, really important tractable problems that we now have technology, communities, and people that can engage and discuss around things and the mandates to, to do them and engage with them. So it's thinking about how these things apply globally around the world. But in the end, acting locally, how to affect the single person on the ground and provide the needs they, that they need and engage them, and not just providing something, but letting them actually come back and be part of that conversation and acting very locally. So following where and where camp last year, we had a crisis camp in D.C., and out of that, John Crowley had talked a lot about the work they've done out in Monterey and having these camps. So a bunch of geohackers descended for a weekend, did an amazing amount of work in developing and gluing together a whole bunch of technologies, things that we talked about in workshops at OpenStreetMap and walking papers, and deploying this to Afghanistan and other countries. So now we've had crisis commons now, which in the past several months, in response to Haiti and then Chile, several thousand people across the world have come on their weekends and volunteered to brand, build brand new iPhone apps and SMS applications, people finder applications and, and um, services to make available. And these are, making real, these are saving lives on the ground. Here's just an example of, of a search and rescue team using OSM on their GPS units in Haiti. It made all the difference in them knowing where they were, where the responders were, and where people were that were entrapped, um, and, and making that data available, and, and now usable even by the government. And this isn't, transparency isn't necessarily just about being a cool, hot topic. It's actually about mitigating disaster. So Arkansas realizes that when the disaster happens, that people go to Tennessee or they go to Illinois, they won't necessarily come to Arkansas. So if their data is as broadly available as possible, people can then use it in helping um, Arkansas when they're in a disaster. So thinking about also these interfaces, so tw only 24% of the world has access to the internet. But 80% live within cell phone coverage and 50% um, of, the own, of the world own a mobile phone. So thinking about appropriate interfaces too. Thinking about SMS and the power now you have in terms of a two-bi-directional communication device ever, all around the world. So we can do really well about hel you know, helping find our friends and helping sell more $4 lattes in Soma. And this is all very interesting, interesting stuff. But if you can use that same technology to help a child in a village find water and live a better life and get education, think of the, the broad, lasting impact that will have both in your life and your community and the world.
Thank you very much.